I need expensive software to make sublimation designs. Wrong. You don't need expensive software. You can use a free online app called Canva to do sublimation designs. You can create your own stuff using clip arts and fonts. Now, is it easier with the Photoshop or uh, GIMP or things like that? Sure. There's going to be limitations with inside of Canva, but designing on the fly, starting out until you're ready to invest in other software, you can absolutely use Canva to create sublimation. What you're going to want to do to start with, you're going to want to grab clip art. You don't have to have this set. This is the set that I'm using in the video though. I will have this link down below on design bundles. You are going, once you purchase this and download it, it's going to come in a zip file and the zip file is going to look something like, just don't judge me for my downloads folder. I get a lot of stuff. <laughs> Your zip file is going to look something like this. In order to open it up to get access to the clip art, you're going to want to right click and do extract. Yours is going to say Summer Girls, something like that, but once you extract it, you'll be able to open up the folder. And here is our folder with all of our characters in it. There's multiple girls, little um, accessories, the little hats, more hair. So I, in my clipper thing, I picked a couple of the girls, the little um, drink and a hat you're going to want to open up Canva. Now, if you don't know what Canva is, Canva is an online and app that you can download on your phone, but it's an online open software kind of thing. Like, um, they have thousands of templates and graphics and clip arts and little things that you can use in order to make designing your own stuff really easy. It's 100% free. There are upgrades that you can like, you can purchase monthly and yearly passes to this day that unlocks other features. But in, for purposes of this video, for majority of the things that you're going to want to do anyways, you can use the free version. There's nothing wrong with it. So to set up a sublimation, like to set up our canvas to get ready for creating a sublimation design. You're going to want to go to the top right <laughs> corner here and do create design. Now we want custom size, but as you can see, there's tons of different sizes that you can use, but we're going to do custom. So we'll click that. Now in order to get the best quality that you can get for printing, you're going to want a 15 by 15 like design board. Some people say that you could use a 17. I want to say that like the, the largest sublimation printers print at 17, but you shouldn't have any problem using a 15 by 15. And you want to make sure, because the default is going to be pixels. Pixels are really, really small. So you're going to want to make sure to click inches, create the new design, and it's going to pop up just a blank canvas. We need to import our little clip arts. In order to do that, you can either drag and drop the designs. Let me pull up our clip art. So I've got the folder open on my computer and you can drag it in and it will put it onto your canvas, but I don't want my stuff immediately on the canvas. So what I'm going to do is upload media, device, and then we're gonna search through it through this way and when you do that, you shouldn't, it should not just automatically dump itself on your, on your canvas, which is ideal. So I'm going to pull in the same things and I'm selecting control to pull in multiple people. And it's pulling it up here. On the left, um, you can see the progress that it's like the, the upload progress with these little bars here. And once all of your stuff is imported, you start to click on it. Now, there's a couple of things when it comes to like the stuff going from our little online folder 
to the board some clip art is going to come with this extra empty space here it's not a huge deal but when we start layering five and six different pieces together having that extra empty space is going to interfere with other parts and you're not going to be able to select <coughs> you won't be able to select what you thought you were selecting so it's best to click on your piece and then use these little um, bars to kind of crop it as close as you can and that way when you select something you are literally only selecting that character so I'm going to drag this in and pop this in too crop our girl same thing with this one alright so now all of our girls have the spaces cropped this one we want to flip her so that the little is on the other side in order to do that we select her and whatever you select this options bar is going to be different depending on what it is that you picked so for clip art we can put different effects on it don't necessarily think that we need any of these effects because it'll change how it looks. Oh, that's kind of cool. <laughs> but you can select different effects. You can go through and filter it, apply different, like, different filters. Why make it complicated? <laughs> but you can apply different stuff to it. You can adjust the tints, things like that, to give her kind of like, a, a glue you know, play with all of these things whatever you want to do feel free to mess around right now we're just gonna flip her horizontally so I need to take that out because I don't like how she looks one second one second one second okay so we're gonna flip her now we got three girls all lined up and I want to make sure that they're all down as far as possible so I'm going to select all three of them and do oh I guess they're down okay so I'm just going to show you what that would have looked like if she was like up here if she was up there you could select them all hit position and do a line on the bottom but they were already aligned on the bottom so that thing didn't pop up for me and right, so we've got that in my original design I added a little hat in here you don't have to of course but if you wanted to tap on it and drag it in don't forget to adjust your box because we don't want all of that extra space I'll put it on this girl here alright so in we want to add some fun text because that's the biggest part I feel like sublimation designing is is adding some quirky little quote thing so in order to do that on the left hand side you've got different options so templates don't touch any of these while you're working on something because it'll just like replace your thing <laughs> but templates this is everything that they offer that you can start with You've got elements here that have different um, like shapes. This is the stuff that I've recently used. So if you were making like sublimate or if you were making like social media posts or things like that, you can pull in different artwork. If we wanted to go a little, put these massive elephant-looking ear things in here, you could do that. Um, charts, frames there's different grids and here you've got a massive amount of shapes so you could pull in some little quirky designs and add that to your sublimation stuff so elements are different things that you can add in like clip art photos stuff like that we're gonna go down to text and this is the stuff that I've already used 
but you can scroll through and you can see that there are a ton of preset things already on here that have the little filters and you can edit that text or you can add your own up here and then change out the text that way just for the sake of creating the same thing and going through the stuff pretty quick I'm going to go ahead and select our two things that I've already used. So this particular like preset is two lines of text put together and then they grouped it. We don't need two lines of text so I'm going to right click and I'm going to ungroup it and I'm going to delete one of these and we're only going to use this top one. I'm going to do ready for and then change somewhere down here so this text is really large and summer's looking a little funky to scale it down you can mess with this options bar up here you can change your colors and change the size by using those or by typing in something. Let's get rid of that extra white space. Or you can select it and then kind of drag it out and it will automatically adjust the size here. I'm going to stick with this size for that. And then for this thing, the cropping, when you select it, this thing right here is like a bounding box and it's only going to allow the text to fill it up and then it's going to move down. We don't need that issue. Like we don't have that issue. <laughs> we can readjust that to get it all on one thing. And we just scale it back down. I want this neon sign to be on top of summer. So you select the neon, right click it, and we're going to bring it to the front. Bringing it forward is only going to put it up to the next layer, but no matter what is on this thing, I want it in the very, very front. So clicking on that will bring no matter what all the way up. You can also send it to the back like that, but for this, we're bringing it, see, it brought it between the one girl and this girl on the left. We need to bring it all the way back to the front. Okay, so we got that. <laughs> and we are ready for summer. Now this, the neon font set, I noticed that it doesn't look super bright and I kind of really want to go for like a white text. So you click effects and you can adjust the intensity of the color part itself or like the writing part itself. Putting it up to 100 is going to give you a solid white text. Putting it down is going to give you a solid like the solid color itself. I don't want that. I want the color like the white color to show up and when you do sublimation designs whatever is white is not going it's it's not going to be there and like so I want the white of the shirt to be popping through that ready text. You can also go through and curve it, change the style if you wanted to. I don't really want to mess with any of that. You can also change the colors here like if you wanted to go for a blue or a green but we just gonna stick with pink because it's it's there and it, lo it, actually, it looks really good. So we got ready for summer our girls and in my original one I had this little drink here and I think we're gonna put the drink back in but this time on the other oops on the other side eh no I'm gonna put it over here because it just looks better over here So now, make this smaller because getting into the importance. So we've got this set up. 
I actually think I'm gonna add a background now because it just matches really. Send all the way to the back. Yeah, I'm cool with that. <laughs> so we got this. We want to save it now. Unless you're paying for their pro membership, it's not a bad deal, but trying to get away as cheap as possible. You don't want to do a PNG. The PNG, the quality of it ended up not being like it was 200 DPI or something like that. And you want to shoot for 300 DPI. And DPI is dots per inch. The higher, like 300 DPI, is going to be the best thing for sublimation designs, especially if you're uploading it to like a print on demand website or something like that, you're going to want good quality. And 300 is kind of like the standard for that. You just trust me. <laughs> so, in order to get our 300 DPI in the 15 by 15 size, we're going to go to file type. We're going to do PDF print. It's going to save out whatever is here as an image. If you open it up in like Photoshop or something, you can pull the different elements from it, but we're not trying to do that. We just want this image saved out. So selecting PDF print is going to give you the 15 by 15 sheets that you're looking for as well as their 300 DPI. So you got your high quality. This, this is what you need. <laughs> so we select that, download it. And then we should be able to open it. If you're down, if you design more than one thing in a um, in a document, it's going to give you each thing in a zip file. I think this one gave us just the image itself. Let's see. Yeah, so I'll show you real quick what that looks like. So it gave us this PDF and we open the PDF. So we got this. When you print this, don't forget to flip your print images because you're going to be placing it on a shirt, but you're going to be placing it like backwards. So when the text is flipped, it will appear the right way. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask it in the, in the comment section below. If you want to see some more kind of like step-by-step -step stuff in Canva, let me know. I'm going to link down the clip art, the website, and the, um, the blog posts where I walk through it. If you're more of a, like... I like the steps so I can refer back to it later kind of thing without having to go through the video again. Um, have an awesome Tuesday, guys. Bye!